everybody! I'm here today to talk to you about 10 tips for driving an automatic car. In this video, I'll be going over 10 simple tips that you can use to be a better driver of an automatic vehicle, a vehicle with an automatic transmission. Now let's get right to it. Tip number one is to make sure that you are fully and completely stopped before putting it into park. I've seen this happen so many times. People are about to park their car, they start pressing on the brake, they slow down, and then they throw the gear selector into park to cause the car to come to a stop. And sometimes, it, you know, absolutely, you can see that they're doing damage to the car. Sometimes it's a little bit more subtle, but either way, if you do that, you're doing damage to the car. Now, let me explain why. When you put your car into park, a car with an automatic transmission, there is something called a parking pole. And that parking pole basically goes into the component of the wheel assembly and holds the car from going forward or backward. Now, if you do that when you're already stopped, what happens is the wheel is stopped. We'll call this the wheel. It's stopped. The parking pole goes in between one of the slots and holds it in place. But when you do it while you're still moving, the parking pole goes into one of the slots, but the wheel is still moving. So it puts a lot of pressure on that parking pole and it can really do some serious damage to the entire component and assembly of everything that's associated with the parking gear okay so that's tip number one before you put it in park just make sure that you are at a complete stop you've completely stopped tip number two always use the handbrake when you put the car in park after you put the car in park or or right before now a lot of people think that when they put the car in park that is automatically not going to move anywhere and that is true most of the time but you are relying solely on the parking assembly and the components associated with the parking gear so what happens is if that parking pole fails or breaks or any part of it fails or breaks your car is going to do what it's going to roll away because when you just put the car in park your parking pole is the only thing that basically causes the car not to move now if you put it in park and you also engage the handbrake either right before you put it in park or right after either way is fine for the most part then what happens is you have a double security so if that parking pole fails then your handbrake will prevent the car from rolling around it's just like a double check that the car is not going to go anywhere when you want it to stay put tip number three ease into the gas pedal now with an automatic car, when you want to get the car moving, you simply press the gas pedal. There's no clutch, there's nothing like that. Like in a manual car, you just push the gas pedal. And because it's so easy and simple, people sometimes think that you just, you push the gas pedal where you want it to go. That's not the way that it works if you want to drive smoothly. You have to ease into the gas pedal. So let's say you want to push the gas pedal this much right here. You would ease into that depression right there. Ease into that depression of the gas pedal. You don't want to just, Put it to the point right there. You want to just press it slowly. You want to ease into it just like that, okay? Tip number four is avoid coasting in neutral. Some people simply, as they're driving, let's say they're driving downhill, they'll put the car in neutral because they want to save some gas. And although it does save a tiny bit of gas, sometimes you're adding in another shift to the transmission. So if you do that every single time that you're driving downhill, you are putting additional wear and tear on the transmission every single time that you do that. So you might occasionally be saving a little tiny bit of gas but the cost for repairing a transmission or replacing a transmission will far outweigh your savings in gas and with modern cars a lot of the times when you're coasting downhill the transmission will kind of ease off and you will conserve gas substantially by itself without even putting it in neutral so i mean you're literally by putting in neutral you're saving a fraction of the gas a tiny amount of gas from time to time on occasion okay so that was tip number four Tip number five is come to a complete stop before switching from reverse to drive or drive to reverse. So many people, and I used to do this when I was younger too, I would reverse out of the driveway, I'd slow the car down a bit, but I'd throw it in drive and I'd just go forward. I would never actually come to a complete stop before I went from reverse to drive and sometimes from drive to reverse. And although you don't, it doesn't seem like you're doing damage because the car just simply goes backwards and then forwards or forwards and then backwards, you are doing some pretty significant wear and tear on your transmission. So with that being said, reverse out of your driveway, come to a complete stop, 
throw it in drive and go forward. And the same goes from for when you're shifting from drive to reverse. Just make sure that you come to a complete stop uh, before you know you go from one to the other. Tip number six is to avoid putting it in neutral at red lights. So first and foremost, like I said before, by putting it in neutral, you're, you're only saving a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of gas, but you're causing a decent amount of wear and tear on your transmission. Imagine that at every red light, you put it in neutral, so at every red light, you're, you're putting more wear and tear on your transmission, okay? Not a good idea. But in addition to that, when your car is in neutral at a red light, if you need to suddenly accelerate, you can't do that. You have to put it in drive and then accelerate. Let's say there's an emergency and you just need to accelerate at that moment. You can't do that. You have to put it in drive and then accelerate. So in addition to it really not saving any gas for the most part, you're also putting yourself in a potentially unsafe situation. Tip number seven is learn to use the kick down method for downshifting, okay? So in a manual car, if you want to downshift, you simply downshift, you select the lower gear and you get more acceleration. In an automatic car, the transmission selects the gear that it thinks is appropriate for you. So with that being said, if you want to downshift, what you should do is use the kick down method. What it is, is you basically take your foot and you press down aggressively on the gas pedal. You floor it basically, you press the gas pedal down to the floor, just like that, boom. As, as sort of as quickly as you can. It's gonna send a signal to the transmission that you want more acceleration. And if your car can actually go down a gear, if it can downshift, it will. If not, you're just gonna get maximum acceleration in that gear. So it all depends on what gear you're in and what speed you're traveling at. Tip number eight is use the extra attention that you have for the road. So obviously when you're driving a manual car, you have to focus on shifting, you have to focus on clutch control, you have to focus on all that stuff. When you're driving an automatic car, you basically just have to focus on using the pedals and steering. So with that being said, you have some extra attention. Now use that extra attention for the road because it could greatly benefit yourself as a driver with regards to your driving skills and the level of safety that you are exhibiting as a driver. Tip number nine is practice makes perfect. Now, when people first learn to drive an automatic car, it's, you know, quite difficult. Driving, learning to drive a manual car is even more difficult, but learning to drive an automatic car is simply difficult because you're learning so many things at once. Your hand-eye coordination along with multitasking, a ridiculous amount of multitasking at once. But I promise you that the more that you practice, the better that you'll be as a driver, the safer that you'll be as a driver, the more skilled that you'll be as a driver. So practice makes perfect. Perfect. And last but not least, tip number 10 for driving an automatic car is don't creep forward unless it is necessary. So I see this happening all the time. You're sitting at a red light and you know you're in, an, you're in whatever car you're in, but beside you is an automatic car. And as the other light turns red, meaning your light is going to turn green soon, the car starts to move forward. And so many times I've seen the car creep forward into the intersection and then the other side of the intersection has an advanced green light, meaning we st still have a red light. So don't creep forward, okay? I know that you want to take your foot off the brake pedal and then push the gas, so that you're ready to push the gas pedal, but creeping forward can put you in an unsafe situation. I've seen it so many times where people creep forward all the way into an intersection through basically a red light. It's still a red light for us. So with that being said, don't creep forward unless you have to. If you have to creep forward like you're driving in traffic, then obviously use the creep forward ability in your automatic car. But don't creep forward unless you absolutely have to. And that's basically it. In this video, I've gone over 10 tips for driving an automatic car, okay? I've went over these 10 tips and they will hopefully help you be a better driver and be a safer driver, a more skilled driver in an automatic car. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know what you think down below as a comment. What are some other tips for driving an automatic car? Let me know down below. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more great car and driving videos just like this one. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.